This first one was sent in to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from James Southard. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Well, I wouldn't bet on it, but he'll get mad at me if I do it bad too, so go ahead. I'm graduating this year, and my graduation is being held at the building formerly known as the Fairgrounds Arena in Oklahoma City. I know this building was the backup for the Myriad, where Mid-South usually ran. I was curious to hear any stories Jim has about the building. We Okies lovingly call the Big House. Oh, God. Um, well, and it, it was only the backup for the Myriad in the modern days because obviously the Fairgrounds Coliseum in Oklahoma, well, I say obviously, but people who hadn't been in it wouldn't know, but the Myriad was in the 80s was a really nice, state-of-the-art, new uh, arena and facility. Prob- I, I would have to think it was the nicest building in the state of Oklahoma, and it would have stood out anywhere. It was beautiful. I loved to go to Oklahoma City. The security was good. The building, even though we drew huge houses, the people, uh, we never had one person try to come over the rail in Oklahoma City. Um how is that possible? How far I, is Oklahoma City from Tulsa? Well, Ed, so you're, you're, you're fucking getting ahead of my fucking story. God damn it. Um, you, you always do that because you're so bright and you're so perceptive, Brian. You're one step ahead of everybody. But no, but it, in Oak City, really, <laughs> you you uh, drove in and there was this, the back area that you came in was fairly private and you could get your car in and out of the building without being, you know, fucking harassed. And you went right in through the back of the, you know, the area to the locker rooms. You didn't have to fight your way through fans or anything. Um, good security on the way out, nice wide aisles. And it was very bright. It was a very bright lit up building. And so they had good uh, railings around ringside, a nice acceptable distance. And the security did a good job. They were a major building. I'm sure they didn't want any troubles anyway. And so it was a like a 13,000 seat arena. Um, and I get, maybe they have a new one now, but it's like I said, it was big shit at the time. And we had a couple of different sellouts there. And over one time I was mad at the building for the last stampede, they had a computer glitch and they had like fucking 500 general admission tickets that they didn't sell when they thought they were sold out. And that doesn't usually happen. Some people say, well, there was 12,500 there. Yeah, but motherfucker, 500, that a building does not fuck up 500 seats, a building at that level. So we were a little pissed, right? But anyway, um, then you would go literally less than 90 miles. And that was on a, on a, also Sunday afternoon, usually. Although with New Year's Eve, December 31st, we did a $60,000 house there, December 31st, 1983. And that was when the territory was down. And New Year's Eve, I had a nine o'clock show. I'd never even seen anything like it. And we got out right before New That was the way people celebrated their New Year's. That was at, you know, 6,000 something people in, in the down territory time. <clears throat> anyway, so... You'd go and it'd be this fucking beautiful arena, clean, and this big house. You wouldn't have any troubles. And less than 90 miles up the road, then we would go to Tulsa. And it was usually on a Sunday, the matinee, 3 o'clock in Oak City, and then 7.30 in in Tulsa. And when you would pull up in the car (laughs) to the fucking, whether it was the Tulsa Assembly Center or the, the Fairgrounds Coliseum in Tulsa was a real pip too, boy. That's where they finally ended up getting the cattle chute, putting those big giant wooden barricades up like a 10 feet wide, a cattle chute to get the guys to come out so the people couldn't fucking attack us. Um, But whether it was the assembly center or whatever parking lot, every car in the parking lot was a pickup truck. And a lot of them had gun racks in the back window, right? And you would you would drive down in Tulsa at the assembly center. You would have to actually drive down a ramp to the back door to the entrance, you know, to the to the the bowels of the Coliseum, the locker rooms, dressing rooms, things. But okay, for the NBA or a concert or whatever, that was fine. But there was a parking area right next to this fucking ramp that goes down, and there's a concrete railing around so people can't fall, but they can take giant rocks and bricks and throw them over this thing down onto you or your car, if they so choose, and have a halfway decent chance of getting away. 
so we would always try to get there as quick as we could to park. It was open, but we would park underneath the roof on the other side, away from where the people could stand, where they would have the farthest throw, right? But sometimes you had to park right on some, we would actually sometimes pay a referee or a stooge to go get our car and pull it back to the door. So they couldn't drop the fucking bricks on us. But anyway, then you would go in the assembly center. It was a diagonal and then a left turn aisle way for the heels to go to the ring. So you're always in trouble when you've got a turn and it was not that wide of a fucking area to begin with. And those goddamn people that came in those pickup trucks were drunker than Cooter Brown on Saturday night. And they were violent. And I would, six shows in a row, I think, was the tally that I kept. But that was just six in a row. That wasn't all that we were at that year. But six shows in a row, we had somebody in our match come over the fucking rail. And and twice made it into the ring. Um, it was completely, and, and even though they had security, they beat them up afterwards, but goddamn, they kept slipping them to get in. Um, I, I, you know, it was just, it was like night and day. I was relaxed in Oklahoma city and it was like, you're in this big NBA style arena and you're having this major match and this big house. And then, uh, you know, if, if Oak city did say 70 grand, then Tulsa would probably do. 35 or 40. I, the, the record, the, uh, uh, the last stampede day, the last stampede did a hundred grand and, and, uh, uh, Tulsa did like 60 something, which was a sellout, but you know, it was <clears throat> Tulsa would not do the money, the gross, the money that, that Oak city would. And also since Tulsa was the home of the, we, we had a feeling that, that Watts took, the office expenses or something out of Tulsa, since that was the home base that he didn't take out of any of the other towns, because we would, we would see our payoffs. And I kind of got to, I didn't have any formula. There was no formula to figure it out, but you could kind of figure out uh, after you'd been there for a while, what payoff you would get based on what the house was and where you were on the car. And I could get to within a hundred bucks of where it was. Tulsa was always 150 bucks light. So I'm thinking he, he took the month's fucking rent on his, you know, home office, or he took something out of fucking Tulsa because it was the worst payoff town too. And there was always a chance you were going to get cut or stabbed or punched or have a rock thrown at you or whatever the fuck, or just be in a riot. That was where the, the internal affairs people came down and investigated the cops saving my life. The time the guy jumped me and all the people got stacked up by the back door night sticked and bloody. Um, and then they kicked the fucking city police out and had the sheriff's department do it. And then the people knocked out the old sheriffs that they sent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've told that story. I, I mean, you're laughing. No, it, 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 we're, we're at the fairgrounds building the first week that they decide that the city police can't do the security anymore because of the lawsuits and the internal affairs people, as I said, had come down and talked about it. And I said, hey, they were just trying to save our life, right? So they send the, whatever county it is in Tulsa, the sher the county sheriff's department is going to do security. And we're at the fairgrounds, which is even buck wilder than the fucking assembly center. And we're the main event, but the semifinal is Nikolai Volkov against Terry Taylor, the North American title, Right. And we're standing back there as we see Nikolai go out for the match. And all of a sudden, and they'd sent these older, like retired or semi-retired sheriff's deputies, like they'd send to do security at the fair or whatever, you know, we all, we, Hey kid, don't be popping that balloon or whatever. Right. So they, they're easily over 60, every single one of them. And they're not that physically intimidating. As soon as Nikolai goes out and we're standing there talking and whatever the fuck waiting, our match is next. And all of a sudden here comes a couple of the deputies carrying, they've hooked this other deputy up under each arm and his feet are dragging. When one of the fucking cowboys went to hit Nikolai Volkov over the head with a chair on his way to the ring, <laughs> he missed and horse collared the fucking old deputy and knocked him out. And I was like, fuck me. <laughs> Let me just go back over this in my mind. 
It was just weeks ago that the internal affairs of the city police were investigating us for the fucking riot that we started, that the cops had to bail us out of, that led to people being nightsticked and stacked up like fucking firewood in this same town. And that was when the goddamn city police were my protection. Now I've got the over the hill gang who they're already knocking out with chairs in the match before we go out. What in the world is going to happen to poor old James? E? <laughs> and it was fucking scary. Um, but yeah, Tulsa. Yes. So Oak city was, I loved Oak city. The fairgrounds was a little dodgy, but we were only there every once in a while at that point. Cause the myriad was, I said was nice, but back in the old days, uh, the fairgrounds in Oak city was the play. That was the Danny Hodge for fuck's sake. And et cetera. Had, had stretched people and, just done all kinds of things to people in that town there in in that building. Which town was it in mid South? I guess it must have been Louisiana then, where when he was booking, Dundee got involved in the fight, but because he was the booker, no one knew who he was and they were ba- looking for yeah. a little Australian man. <laughs> yeah. He, he was he was either John Doe or unnamed co assailant. I care. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, when Glenn Fry dedicates the show and they're dedicated to show at the Eagles reunion tour. This goes out to my ex-wife plaintiff. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was Baton Rouge at the Centroplex. Uh, we, we would run Baton Rouge every other Tuesday night that we didn't run Shreveport at the auditorium. So Dundee wasn't wrestling at the time. So with the we're coming back for the match and the guy, we had bicycle rack railings there after we had had a previous riot in Baton Rouge where fucking Bobby Eaton hit, had the racket and hit this. And it was, it had the cookie sheet and the chain on it. Right. Cause Baton Rouge was already shaping up to be one of those towns. And this guy fucking nailed Dennis and took off and buddy Landell was watching to help us get back. And he fucking tackled the guy and Bobby came with the racket right over the top. He bent it like a fucking, Laurel and Hardy comedy would you would hit a guy with a fucking like a pot, like pots and pans with a <laughs> pot over his fucking head. He bent the goddamn racket over this guy's fucking head. Scared him, thought he'd killed him. He'd never carry the racket again after that. Because he thought he'd killed a guy. But anyway, um, so when they got bicycle racks for us, well, this guy ran up to the railing as I was walking by, and I had my racket in my right hand and I always carried my, my right arm bent up with the racket blocking my right side and my left hand up over my head so I can look under, but I've got my head blocked, right? Well, this guy jumps and puts his foot on the rail and stands up as far as he can reach. He swings out and tries to get me. But when he does, I see the swing coming and I duck and he swung past and I draw back to fucking hit him with the racket and I hit a cop on the backswing in the back of the head, right? Or in the top of the head. Boom. And then I hit the fucking guy. Boom. Well, a cop gets mad because I hit him. So that's why I got cited for that one. Uh, but anyway, as I'd hit him the once and he's away over the rail, Dundee was watching the match. He's the booker. He came from the other side of the rail and just ran right down the rail and got on the guy just straight punches right to the fucking face. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, I felt almost felt sorry for the guy, but I would have except he wasn't hitting him with his working punch where he could really hurt him. He was just fucking punching him straight in the face hard as he could about five times. Boom, 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 boom. Dundee would not back up from most fucking people. This I'm sure it doesn't surprise anybody. Um, and then the cops jumped and tried to pull the guy out of the way and blah, blah. And Dundee just kind of got scarce. Well, I go back in the fucking locker room. Well, they come, they write me a fucking ticket for assault. I'm a why. And basically that's when they told me, well, the other cop got mad because you hit him on his, on your backswing. And well, what the fuck? So anyway, uh, that's the guy that sued. And, uh, but he made the mistake of suing the city of Baton Rouge, which owned the Centroplex and the police department, and everything. And you can't sue the city in the crookedest state in the country. So it, we never even hired a lawyer on that and it never went anywhere. And then, uh, but yeah, he, Dundee was named as, you know, the unnamed other person who fucking attacked this guy. And he just stopped. He didn't go to Baton Rouge for a couple months. And then fucking <laughs> they forgot what he looked like. Uh, and then later on when WCW, after they had, after TBS had bought the company from Crockett ran Baton Rouge on a very ill 
advised and poorly drawing tour through Louisiana. And God, that was, so this was 1984 was the incident. And it, we, it was 19, 1989, I think it was, like November of 89 or December maybe that they went back through there. And goddamn, if that guy didn't serve us again and try to fucking wow. stir it up again. Yeah, but he tried to. <laughs> the problem was Stan was the third guy instead of Dennis. So he just stuck it. <laughs> They're trying to hand him Dennis Condry's fucking lawsuit. He's like, fuck you. And just handed it back to the guy. <laughs> the fuck do you think I am? Uh, but yeah, we, we, we had so much heat in that territory. We were still getting served with shit six years later. 